The first tip for building an awesome ported subwoofer enclosure is to crunch a little bit of numbers and make sure you've correctly calculated your port length using this formula right here. And if you're math phobic, don't let the formula scare you. I've got some resources for you later in the video. To use the formula, you will need your box volume, your desired tuning frequency, and the cross-sectional area of your port. That's the area of the port opening, which is a function of the diameter on a round port or the width and height of a rectangular vent. As the box gets bigger, holding everything else constant the port will get shorter as the tuning frequency goes down holding everything else constant the port's going to get longer as the cross-sectional area gets bigger the port gets longer more on that in just a little bit the second tip is to make the port opening as big as you possibly can this reduces the speed of the air pumping in and out of the port if that air speed gets too high you get port noise that's a bad thing you don't want it but it also creates another problem as the opening gets bigger the port has to get longer so the port's going to end up taking up more volume inside the enclosure. That means the enclosure has to get bigger. The enclosure size, especially in a car, is often the limiting factor. Plus, if the port gets too long, it's harder to fit it inside the box. You'll need some kind of bend in the port to make it fit. Third, use a program like WinISD, which is a free program you can use to model your enclosure. Not only will it give you tools you can use to analyze your frequency response, it will also calculate your port airspeed velocity. You gotta keep that airspeed low so you don't have that chuffing. There is a big downside to the program it's not been updated since 2016 and it can be a royal pain in the rear to use tip number four if you can you should use flares i'm a big fan of this style flared port right here i'll give you a link to them down in the video description but they only go up to six inches in diameter so for really big systems with huge subwoofers you should check out some of these big ass ports from amped up car audio i've got links to all of these down in the video description plus a link to a calculator that will do all this math for you which brings brings me to the fifth tip. Click on that link. It will take you to DIYAudioGuy.com where you can check out that port length calculator. There are two versions. One's a standard calculator that's designed for circular, square, and rectangular ports. To use that, it's just a matter of choosing either metric or freedom units, plugging in your net enclosure size, your desired port tuning frequency, choosing round or rectangular, and plugging in the dimensions of your port opening. The other calculator is made specifically for round ports with a flare. It has a couple of extra features. It will tell you your total overall length and it will give you a link to a flared port kit. These kits come in three parts, two flared ends and a straight center tube. The calculator will tell you how long you need to cut that center tube to get the proper length. And if that tube needs to be longer, you can purchase extra tube segments just by clicking on the link there in the calculator. If you're not able to use a flare, try to add a round over to your port. You can do this with a router. If you don't have a router, sandpaper will get the job done. Tip number six, head over to patreon.com where you can purchase pre-made plans and skip all of the math. While you're there, you can support this content right here by signing up for Patreon, just like these guys right here at the bottom of the screen have done. And as always, I need to give a big shout out to the $25 and up patrons, Jonathan, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. But seriously, here is the real tip number six. If you're using a slot port or any port that shares a port wall with the exterior wall of your enclosure, all of the port calculators are wrong. You need to apply an additional correction factor by taking the width of the port and dividing it by two and then subtracting that from your length. That's because the effective port length will extend out past the end of your port wall as the air moves up against the wall of the enclosure. That's why my calculator has this little checkbox right here. If you're using a slot port, check that box. It'll decrease the length of your port by half of the port width. Tip number seven, when building your enclosure, keep in mind that the port length is measured down the middle of the port. This is very important if you have a bend in your port and that's really common with slot port enclosures. Take this box right here. I'm building this box for a big down for sound 18 inch subwoofer. To help you visualize what I'm talking about, I've added a line down the center of the port. The first port wall is about 13 and a quarter inches but you got to go halfway down into the bend the first port segment is 16 and a quarter inches that second port wall is 19 inches but again you have to go down into the bend so that whole segment is 22 inches both segments are three inches longer than the walls and that means that the port is actually six inches longer than the wall length that just happens to be the exact same length as the width of the port and that is not an accident the total wall length you need for your port needs to be reduced by the width of 
of the port. Tip number eight, if you can, put a round over or a bevel in this corner right here and add a 45 to this corner over it. Just make sure that the diagonal distance across the corners of the port is at least the same as the width of the port. Tip number nine, if you've got multiple ports, especially round ports, you've got to pay extra attention to the area of the port opening. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you have a big six inch round port. You might think that two three inch ports will give you the same port area, but that's not how it works. Here I've got a six inch circle and right beside it I have two three inch circles. If you take those three inch circles and move them inside the larger six inch circle, you can see that two three inch circles have a much smaller area relative to a single bigger six inch circle. The area of that six inch circle is about 28 and a quarter square inches. The two three inch circles combined is about 14 square inches, which is half. You would need four three inch ports to get the same cross section as one six inch port. It turns out that two three inch ports would have about the same area as a single four and a quarter inch port. Well, that's easy to avoid. Just use slot ports. Slot ports don't have that problem, right? No, they don't. But anytime you use multiple ports, you run into another problem. And that is what tip number 10 is all about. If you have two ports, each port will only tune half of the box. And that matters because as the box gets smaller, the port has to get longer. So let's say you've got a four cubic foot box and you're going to use two ports. Each port then acts like it is in a two cubic foot box. So the port has to be longer. My online calculator will adjust for this. Let me show you an example. Here we have a single four foot wide, 12 inch tall slot port. Did I just say four feet? It's not four feet, it's four inches. And it needs to be about 17 and a quarter inches long. But if we go with two ports, each of them two inches wide, so we have the same cross section, both of those ports need to be almost 20 inches long. Click right here to learn more about ports. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.